Yeah. Ready whenever, yeah. Second Very distant. most points. I'm sorry. Go for it. Go. Second most points in the field my era score. Yeah, I know it's only one game, but what were your takeaways? Well, I mean, the bottom line is our job is to score enough points to win the game. You know, our defense played great. Special teams gave us a great start. I mean, obviously, a incredible start to the game. It's a team game, and so that's always going to be our charge. And so whatever it takes mentality. And uh, overall, from the first game, you know, there was just like you would kind of hope the first game would go. Uh, y there's some really positive things that happen. Also, a lot of things that need to get corrected for us to be an effective offense. Tommy, or Brett talked about Tommy's composure, his demeanor. What, what did you see out of him in that element of his game? I think he settled in as the game went on. I mean, shoot, I mean, I had, I had nerves. I mean, I don't, I don't think they were called jitters, but I mean, how, you, you know, you work all year round and you have 12 opportunities, and when that opportunity gets before you, like, adrenaline pumps. Right. I mean, that's just, you just can't stop it from pumping, you know, and as a player, as a coach, or whatever. And, and so uh, I thought he, you know, early on, uh, you know, kind of that was really going, you know, in him, and, and it didn't rattle him by any means because he was really composed, but just that extra adrenaline, he leveled off, and as the game went on, uh, just got better and better and settled in more and more. And uh, I thought for his first game, he did exactly what we asked him to do uh, and performed at a, at a really a really nice level. How well do you think he did at uh, reading and options and uh, just poising the pocket? Yeah, I thought he did a nice job. That was one of, you know, one of the things we wanted to stress with him is I thought our guys did a a good job of protecting him, and uh, we, we weren't under, under duress a whole lot. You know, uh, Wyoming kind of chose to play, um, you know, pretty pretty vanilla defensively. Uh, it's kind of their mo anyway. But I think even more so, not 100 percent sure what to expect from us. It was we got kind of a a vanilla response from them defensively, and so. Um, but you know, I thought just overall he handled himself with pretty pretty good composure from start to finish. What do you know about uh, Indiana defensively? What are oh. some of the challenges there? Yeah, well, kind of the polar opposite of what we just played, you know, to, to some degree uh, from a mentality standpoint. Um, just, you know, it's an attack, it's an attack driven defense and a tra attack driven, um, you know, team. That's kind of how uh, Co Coach Allen and uh, that's kind of their mentality. And they've made that very clear and watching them on film. And they try to create havoc on you uh, from an offensive standpoint, uh, very aggressive. Uh, very calculated in how they come about you when they come about uh, come trying to get to you. Uh, and so it's a really a, a strong dichotomy from what we saw last week uh, in, in our preparation. Do you see an opportunity to go vertical a little bit more? Is, is, that, is, is that a focus in practice? Hey, listen, we, we, yeah, there were several routes that were, that were vertical down the field the other day that just didn't unveil through whether the progression, the read, the coverage. You know, Wyoming chose to play off coverage quite a bit and um, – you know, um, stayed deep, you know, played a lot of cover three during the course of the game, a lot of quarters, like, you know, things that protect the ball kind of going vertically a little bit down the field. And um, so I'm going to plan on trying to execute the best plan we can to win. Um, and sure, we got it, you know, we need to be able to put the ball down the field. That's part of the plan. We run play action and run the ball and create opportunities to put the ball and create chunk yardage plays. I mean, those are important to us offensively, but you can't, you can't be stubborn about it either. You've been high on Pat Bryant season camp and play number one and gets that pancake block on the outside for Chase and then has some, a couple of catches. Just what did you see out of him on Saturday that, that you believe? Uh, you know, practice practice habits become game day realities. That's what I saw with him and a lot of players. But he uh, performed at the level that he'd been performing to since uh, spring and fall camp. Had a really strong fall camp. Went out and uh, he loves football. That's one thing about Pat. And a lot, we had a lot of guys on our team that love football. But that he loves football and he loves to do whatever it takes to play and win. And, and that's why he's earned the opportunity to play like he has. And he did a nice job on Saturday. With Josh out, how important were those reps for Chase Hayden, for Reggie Love? And I guess even yeah. what could Aiden add to that mix? Yeah, yeah hugely important, I think. And those guys are veteran players that have both had their fair share of injuries and missed time over the year. And so even though they're older, to, to be able to play in the first game and have a significant amount of carries and feel that in the game action. So now when we go into game two, it's not game one for them. So that was really big. Does not having him change much of how you want to scheme? Is it just a different back? He's a different back, and we know that he's different than the, the other backs, you know. Um, so does it change? Yeah, well, maybe a little bit. You know, we're certainly going to miss him in that regard. Uh, there's some things he brings to the table that's probably unique to the, to the room. Um, but, you know, we've got a lot of good depth, a lot of experience there that, that you know, it's a next man uh, mentality, and I think those guys will be ready to answer that challenge. Did you strike a run pass balance that you were maybe looking for? 
I was wanting to go in the game to run 41 runs and 40 passes. That was what I was trying to accomplish. Obviously, I'm just kidding. That's, That's no, yeah, impressive. No, no uh, I mean, listen, uh, ba balance to me is um, – Balance to me is, you know, being able to win a game throwing and be able to get, win a game running. And then after that, I don't really get too caught up in, you know, pre-scripting or not, or, you know, trying to target a certain number of each. You know, it's just kind of how the game unveils and how it unfolds. And uh, it just so happened the other day that it ended up being almost perfectly harmonized, you know, uh, which is unique. It doesn't happen like that very often. I wouldn't anticipate it happening much more during the course of the year, to be honest with you. What did you make about the offensive line just gelling together in that first game? Yeah, that was important. I mean, those are, listen, those are such critical factors that, that, um, that you know, we as coaches sometimes, and certainly from the outside, you, you lose sight of. You know, you got – basically, you have a guy playing center for the first time ever in college. You got a, uh, a left guard and a right guard uh, that hadn't played in this level of college football. And then uh, – and then of course you got Paucho who makes up enough starts for the rest of them, you know, during his career. But so you, to build a play a game, uh, you know, to play sixty or seventy plays together, and see blitzes and looks and different fronts and all that, it's priceless to be able to get that done. And we'll grow from that. I thought they did it really. They played physical. Uh, we we weren't all like that, you know, like our team on offense. There was mistakes um, at every position, and there was some up front, but they played physical and. Uh, and then we played cleaner in the second half and really started covering them up better and uh, I really liked the way we finished the game. You weren't here, but uh, yeah. this team had some red zone issues last year. I'm sure you saw that on film, but how do you feel like you're, you're, you did in the first game? Seems like it went pretty well yeah, I, in the red zone. I, yeah, you know, I haven't spent much time thinking or talking about, you know, what, what what's behind us is, and even from last week reflective of the – of the red zone. The bottom line is we got to have touchdowns, not field goals, when we get down there. And, and we had some critical penalties that removed us from, you know, striking distance that pushed us out of that, that ended up resulting in a field goal uh, made and a field goal, uh, field goal opportunities or field goal attempts, you know. And, uh, but we, we, you know, it's important and to be an effective offense. And you, it's, it's really about red zone scoring and touchdowns. That's a point of emphasis. We did okay there the other day. You know, we were okay. Uh, I don't know if it was good enough to win a Big Ten game. And, so that's a point of emphasis for always, always is when we get down there, we got to have touchdowns, not field goals. And this bunch does a particular really good job in the red zone with their defense and their defensive structure, and they've got a good plan there. So it'll be a challenge. Were you happy with the you know, second half adjustments? It seemed like first half there was a lot of look to the side and I looked for okay. The second half it seemed like everybody was comfortable with what was going on and you could play with a little more pace. Yeah, I, I don't think I sensed, uh, at least from my perspective, that there was a bunch of look back in the okay. first half. There may have been, I think we had a couple signal you know, just a couple uh, miscommunications up front that we just got Tommy's attention and said, hey, listen, this 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 is the formation. Or like, no, we got, you know, just a little, just some growing pains in, in the no huddle communication. But I do, to your point, I do believe we settled in in the second half. We made some adjustments kind of midway through the third quarter. Uh, I think that helped us run the ball better down the stretch for sure. Road game at night, first conference game as well. What are your thoughts about uh, the challenges for you and the offense in that environment? Yeah, I think, you know, that's going to be a key for us to be able to handle the environment. And, um, but, you know, that, that's, that's what college, that's why we do this, right? Is to, you can't, you, when you sign up here, you don't get all of them at home. I mean, the big part of your challenge in your season is to go on the road. And, um, you know, I think everybody's excited. I know they're excited. We're excited. It's, it's a Big Ten football on a Friday night. Um, it's going to be a great atmosphere. And uh, I think our guys are really looking forward to it. It'll be a challenge, though. So we got to handle the environment. And, We've been working on that a little bit during the week, and it'll be a challenge from that regard. But uh, it'll, it'll be a great challenge overall, uh, no doubt. But it's one that we're looking forward to uh, going in our team and going and playing the best we can. Coach, what have you been your impressions of Ryan Walters? I know he's on the other side of the ball since you got here. Tell me about your relationship. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been really cool to, to uh, um, you know, beyond cool, that's a bad word, but it's been, we formed a, good, a great relationship. And uh, I've got a ton of respect for him. and. Uh, Getting to know him, and and not just as a as a coach, but as a person, as a father, and you know, as a husband, it's like he's he's a he's a he's a real one, you know. And he's a, a fantastic coach. They've got great chemistry on their defensive staff. They just do a phenomenal job, and you can see that going against them from the spring and the fall, over and over again, just how how well coached they are, how much they believe in him. Just overall, uh, he's an impressive uh, he's an impressive person, and I'm uh, glad he's he's on our side. Do you see him as a future head coach? I know all you guys want to do that, but do you see him that yeah, coming down the yeah, road? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's got all those characteristics that, 
you know, that I think that, that administrators and, you know, people, the powers that be look for in, uh, in hiring somebody who's in charge is somebody like that. It's got integrity and character and personality and can coach and, and, and is a pretty good golfer at that, too. <laughs> What did you, you learn about, I know you've been doing it for a while now, but what did you learn about yourself as a play caller on Saturday? Were there things that surprised you that they worked or surprised you that they didn't work? Uh, I don't know about, I mean, you're always learning. Like, you know, like, I mean, like I, t I tell the players, I mean, we, we're all going to make mistakes on game day. I made, I made some mistakes on game day, and those are going to happen. When you call a volume of plays, you're going to have a few that you wish that you would have back during the course of the game. You just try to minimize those, you know, that, that never changes. Uh, whether it's a victory or a loss, you always look back on the film and say, man, I wish I would have had that one back. Or I wish, And that's how you grow. Like, you learn from that. And you bank those in your memory. And so, um, you know, but just, you know, you call a lot of plays during practice, during scrimmages, during games. You kind of get used to calling plays. And there's some that are more important than others, you know, as far as the timing of when they occur and the situation. But all that comes through preparation during the week, right? And so... Everything that we put forward during the week, the study, the plans, the scripts, all that stuff prepares you for game day and, and hopefully we'll be our very best prepared on Friday night so we can put our best foot forward and me in particular the play caller. I mean, I guess also on the can't anticipate it from, but what did you think of your quarterbacks getting as many guys involved in the passing game? That, I think that was something, too, that had showed up during, you know, practices for us, too, is that, there, you know, I kind of mentioned to you guys just that, you know, each day was kind of a different guy and, you know, each 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 receiver had their moments, whether it's a tight end or back. I think you saw that on Saturday. Uh, and something that uh, it's not necessarily intentional, but when you play a byproduct, when you play guys and rotate guys, especially in the heat the other day, you know, you, you we're not we're just going through our progressions and our reads and, uh, you know, we, we probably don't know who's out there half the time, you know, because we're going fast and you're, it's the X receiver. It's not like we're thinking, oh, it's Brian over there or Casey over there. On a, to a large majority, there's times where that that certainly dictates maybe some things that goes on as far as you know where you start, what's primary. But for the most part, just going through progressions helps create multiple touches for people, and it's something that I believe in. Brian had a couple of big catches on third down just to move the chains. What did he give you at that position? Kind of a big body there. Well, Brian and Casey both yeah. had really good yeah. critical situation catches, you know, and they're both big body guys that. Brian is really just steady, you know. He knows the offense very well. Uh, he's very versatile in that regard. Uh, he's playing his best football. It's no secret, you know, as far as, as – of course, he's been really solid since I've been here, but I know Coach has said it re repeatedly. He's playing his best, and that's what you want. You want a fifth-year senior or uh, a senior in his last year or, I guess, a redshirt junior or whatever that be, an older guy that could be a senior, um, you know, playing his best football late in his career, and that's what you want. That's what you want from all your players. What's it say about Jordan coming in? off the bench a little bit and kind of stabilizing that touchdown drive and what you see out of him. Yeah, I think that was just huge for him, you know. I mean, I, I, we only – shoot, man, none of us know. I mean, I, I personally don't know because I never had one, but, you know, to have a – I wouldn't – I don't know, catastrophic injury like he did, a pretty significant injury like he had last year. Um, you know, basically you end up getting removed from football and your world is rehab like an ACL injury. Those are – that's a lonely world for a young man. Uh, it's a lonely world for football to be taken away from them and – to rehab and to do all the great it's not just Jordan Slaughter it's there's guys going through it right now across the country uh, and uh, you know the, and to, the, to them and their world that's a huge thing and for him to bounce back from that to actually feel the satisfaction of playing and contributing because he's important for us he's been fight, fight scratching and clawing he's very versatile, versatile up front uh, I think I think we were all super happy for him um, and pleased with the way he got in there and, 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 and bounced back what can we expect from uh, Hank Beatty? Coach Bielan was always talking about how good his hands are. Can, or can we expect to see him targeted a little bit more, you think? Well, I mean, I don't know about – I mean, I think you'll see Hank play, you know. Um, and so, um, you know, there's there's only so many footballs that go around, you know, during the course of the game. And, and he's one of those guys, just like those other receivers we were talking about, like when they're in the game, like I've got full confidence. I know George has full confidence in whoever they are. If they're in the route structure and they're primary, we're good. We wouldn't put him out there otherwise. And so as far as him, you know, specifically being targeted, I mean, I think that's what happened by the byproduct of the offense, like all the most all the other receivers. And uh, But he's somebody as a young guy that's really been stood out. And um, it, obviously the catch he made the other day was phenomenal. Uh, but that's him. He, he's got great hands and he makes plays and he understands the offense. And uh, there's no doubt he's going to help us, and he's going to, you know, he'll continue to help us, and that only can probably strengthen as we get going. What does having so much length all the way down your offensive line do for you from a lineman's perspective? 
Yeah, that's a good question. You know, we are we are tall and long. And it's a reminder when I get in the huddle with them. You know, every now and then you're kind of looking up at, at all of them. They are very tall and long, and uh, I think we cover up people. We run outside zone pretty well. Um, they, they stay on their feet well. You know, so uh, and our backs are you know our backs are, are not short by any means, but they're not like tall backs either. You know, and they're not. And so I think that's a good combination. You got length and you got backs that are you know kind of get behind them a little bit and. So I think that's a positive thing, and you know, obviously for extension, you know, you got to play with your hands, and so it helps them separate a little bit, you know, from the defensive lineman. A short arm uh, offensive lineman is sometimes challenging. There's been some really good ones that have shorter, you know, shorter arm spans, but we do have a bunch of guys that have length, and um, if we can continue to to get better there about, you know, IDing and being on the same page, I, you know, we we can be pretty effective. I think. It seems like most of the passing is kind of shortened quick passes on Saturday. How much of how much of I guess maybe keeping Tommy upright was part of that strategy? Um not not a lot, to be honest with you. I mean like we I mean just in general we're kind of a quick quick pass team, you know, um, especially on early downs, trying to stay ahead of the chains and thought we did a good job on that. But like and it, it's always a priority to protect our quarterback. Like we don't want to put you know, and this will be a great challenge this week because as much as we kept him clean last week, they're gonna try to keep him Dirty this week. I mean, you know, they're going to try to keep him on the on the turf. You know, this week with pressures and the way they come and get him, and so we know that we know the challenge that's coming ahead and, and from that regard. Um, but um, just just in general, it was not really pressure based last week. You know, so there was some underneath zones that we took advantage of and threw the ball, got out of our hand on early down, stayed ahead of the chains, and that would be critical that we continue to be able to do that.